Okay, so this is a, maybe one of the first times in this unit that we're looking at applications, applied problems, real situations. And for some people, that helps to make make connections between some of the things you've looked at here. You're going to do some solving equations in this. We're going to think about what the graph of something looks like. And hopefully between those, you can maybe make some connections from earlier things. Uh, the first situation here, uh, exponential growth, something that's growing exponentially. If you think of uh, how, I mean, if you if you take, let's uh, take two sets of numbers here. Uh, actually, let's let's use a spreadsheet because it's the quickest way to generate the list here. I think a prepared person would have had that already running. All right. Okay, something that's growing. So we need some we need some numbers here. Some x values. We'll just use actually I'll leave the first column open for no I won't. I'll put this in zero, one, two. Uh, Excel actually can follow a pattern down if it's kind of an arithmetic sequence. It just fills it out like that if you drag it down. Um, something that's growing uh, as a linear function, you've looked at linear functions a lot. You might have, I don't know, 100 at the start here, and then you're adding 50 every time or something like that. So then you're going to have 200. And if you follow that pattern down, again, Excel can follow it down if it's an arithmetic sequence. You're adding a certain amount each time there. You could write, an, you could write a, a function for that. It would be a linear function. If you graph that function... It's going to be a line that's going up to the right. How you know it's a linear function is because every change of 1 here has the same change here. What would the slope of that graph be, just looking at the table? What would it be? Somebody be brave. The slope is just the change in y relative to the change in x. So when, the ch when x changes 1, y changes how much? 50, right? The slope would be 50. 50 over 1, or if you went from there to there, 100 over 2. Anywhere you go here, the slope's the same. If you go from 10 to 11, it goes, changes 50. That's a linear function. An exponential function is different. Instead of repeatedly adding like that, let's just get these numbers again. Uh, instead of repeatedly adding here, uh, what happens is, see, I, I could have filled out this list as putting 100 first, and then I could have said this cell is going to be equal to, let's delete this and think about how you write an equation for that. If I wanted to write an equation on a spreadsheet, you can say each one is, you take the previous one, plus how much did I add each time? 50, right? So I could have just done it like that and then filled it down. I'm repeatedly adding something. Exponential is repeatedly multiplying. The situation that was on the sheet that I gave you was, well, we can we can start with the same number. And let's say every time now we're going to multiply it by something. What do you want to multiply it by here? Let's say that this is not going to be this plus something. This is going to be this times something. Two, you want to multiply it by two? So that's going to be 200. What's the next one going to be? 400. If you continue this down here, it gets big pretty quickly. Exponential growth, something that grows exponentially grows very rapidly, right? It's, I mean, the, the major difference to notice here right off the bat is the difference between any two cells here is not always the same, right? This one goes up 100, but then this goes up 200 and 400. You're repeatedly multiplying by, by 2. As soon as you get up to here, multiplying by 2 is a big difference, right? Repeated multiplication is exponential. Repeated addition is a linear function. If you continue this down here, it's going to exceed the what you can display here pretty soon, I think. All right, and it'll start putting it in scientific notation, I guess, if it doesn't have enough room. Even if you only multiply by, like I multiplied by 2, that, that makes it pretty quick. But instead here, let's multiply by, so let's say that times, I don't know, times something smaller than 2, what could I multiply it by that's smaller? That would still make it grow. What could I multiply it by? If I multiply it by 0.5, what's going to happen here? What am I going to have? 
Then these are good questions here. So now instead I'm going to, well, let's get rid of this. And then we'll fill that down. What's going to happen every time? It's getting smaller. That's actually not exponential growth. It's exponential decay. Number's getting smaller. But this is a pretty important thing to know. And you can relate it to the graphs when we look at the graphs. When I'm repeatedly multiplying by a number less than 1, what's happening to the values? They're smaller. If I was repeatedly multiplying by a number bigger than 1, what happens to the values? Yeah, they increase, right? So you're going to relate this to graphs when we look at it in a second here. What could I multiply this by if I wanted it to grow but maybe not very fast? Yeah, 1.1, 1, 1. 1, something like that. See, then you only have 110. That's basically growing like 10%. Oops, that's no good. Growing 10% every jump there. It's still going to increase. And actually, if you continue it, it eventually, you know, it does increase. Not nearly as fast, obviously, because multiplying by 1.1 isn't as, effect, you know, as effective to make it grow as 2 is. If we did actually 1 itself, what would happen there? Yeah, it's just going to stay the same, right? If I multiply by 1, if that is that times 1, I mean, this is pretty obvious, right? But 100, if you do 1 itself, it just doesn't change. If you do less than 1, it goes down, it decays. If you do more than 1, it increases. Okay, so let's look back at this. We're going to write a function for this now. For those two things, actually, let's take a picture of that so we can try and write an equation for each of those. You might do this up at the top here, I would say. Um, let's do a bunch of undos and get my thing back there. Okay. Is that okay if we use the one that's 1.1 1 .1 there? Okay, so you might want to write down just a few of those, uh, each of those tables. I'm going to cheat and do this. That's probably enough to work with. Just the first few, I would say. Okay, this is this first one is linear, right? The first one is linear growth, I don't know. You could call it an arithmetic sequence. You learned that in grade 10. The idea is that it's repeated addition. Whereas the other one here, this is exponential growth or decay. Oops, write the whole word. Exponential growth. Or again, decay, if it's getting smaller, decay. I guess you could say it's linear decay. I don't know, I'll put that in brackets here. What kind of a sequence does this represent? Not an arithmetic sequence, this. What does it represent? Yeah, um, people don't usually call it that. They use this word arithmetic for linear functions, and they use the word geometric. Now, we're going to look at geometric sequences this year. You might have started just to talk about what geometric sequences are in grade 10, but maybe not have done a whole lot with it. Oops. Okay, geometric sequence. It is repeated. What is it? Repeat. It's not repeated addition. It's repeated multiplication, right? Now, I'm not trying to show you things until your intelligence by showing you things you already know here. If we were going to write a sort of a long statement for the first thing, for the first, for the first uh, function here, you could write it as we start with 100, right? I start with 100, and then I added, what, 50? And then I added 50, and then I added 50. I kept adding 50. That's how you get... That's how you get uh, the y value. After, you know, when x is, if you called this x and this y, 
the way you write that equation is y equals 100 plus 50 times x, right? That's a linear function. Normally, it, for, for some reason, I think it's better that, I wish we would write uh, linear equations like that more often. But in grade 10, you seem to write it the other way around. Which way do you write it? You write 50x, you seem to always put that first. To me, it makes more sense to do this. I'm going to stop this so that we can 